Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to your Liberty Radio on a Tuesday night uh, or afternoon or maybe Wednesday morning, depending on where you find yourself in COVID land. Uh, We are here on a regular non-broadcast day because it is our immense pleasure to be joined this evening by none other than the host of the Independent Review, which many of you have probably seen Friday mornings on the AM Wake Up channel, either on Rockfin or on Rumble. Uh, which name do you prefer to go by? Let me ask you that. <laughs> oh, um, like Ryan or Graham? I'm fine with either. I, you know, I grew right. up with too many Ryans, so I'm so used to Graham. But you know, as I got older, a little less. Well, yeah, and Coach would usually call you by your last name Always, as opposed yep. to your first name because, again, yep. in my class, there were X amount of Jameses right. and like a handful of Bryans, uh, a couple of Steves, which was mm. surprising. Apparently, uh, Steven is not that popular of a name, but we had <laughs> we had a few of them. Yeah, my buddy that I run the business with, he's uh, his name is Ryan as well, and that makes it tough when people call. And I, yeah, I remember growing up, there was a least four Ryans in almost every class I had must have been that time a must have been a phase going on with parents with the whole there was a Ryan C a G an H a B oh wow it was too many (laughs) well I've I've met quite a few uh Ryans in my life but before we get uh too far away uh again welcome to Liberty Radio and for the folks who are not familiar with the independent review itself Mm-hmm. Why don't we uh, give them a little more insight into what exactly that is? For sure. Yeah. And hey, thanks for having me on here. I really appreciate, you know, taking the time and honored to have you. I mean, have you have me on your show? I really appreciate it. Uh, if I could get my words out right. Uh, yeah. So basically, Independent Review uh, was essentially started. Uh, I just had an idea after watching, seeing so many different. Actually, I'll go back to kind of the origins of stuff of. Uh, my buddy who run the business with, he kind of introduced me to Whitney Webb and kind of got down that rabbit hole in about 2019, kind of right as the Epstein stuff was going down. And from there, that's kind of where I found from Whitney, I found Corbett, uh, James Evan Pilato, Media Monarchy, like your, <laughs> uh, I found Ryan Christian. And from Ryan Christian, that's where I found um, Scott Armstrong when he was doing Truthzilla at the time and reached out to him about doing you know, some shirts cause he had a shirt store and he's local at the time he was in Oregon. That's where I'm at. And he reached back out. Um, and from there we kind of got to talking and I just gave him some ideas. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm always stuck in traffic for a really long amount of times and I'm trying to watch all these shows and half of it, I want to archive to keep because so much stuff is getting scrubbed. And a lot of it, it was really just to kind of save, um, watch later and even save for like my kids for later because so much as you know so much of this is getting censored or taken oh, yeah. down and even stuff on you know the archives is now getting taken down so that was kind of my goal just for myself kind of selfishly is like i'd like to keep it for myself and and save it and you know grand theft world is an awesome show and being a little longer and i know the the good premise is you can kind of break it down and watch about an hour a day and my thought was in my short amount of time or kind of newer people that aren't in this realm of independent media that uh, it, I'm kind of not to get off track, but I feel like I got into this reverse where a lot of people tend to finally get to this level of seeing people like yourself that aren't the gatekeepers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, they usually start at the top where I kind of went reverse with Whitney, I feel. So I didn't really start with the Rogans or the brands or any of that. Not, I obviously knew about them, but that wasn't my realm of, you know, sourced material and information and kind of, you know, the daily news from actual people that don't have these biases or stuck in the two party illusion. So uh, long story short, my idea was like, I wish I could kind of condense it and make it fun. It'd be kind of fun to have something like that. And Scott was like, you should just do it. And I was like, I don't really want to spend the time to do it, but he's like, no, just do it, throw it out there. Be fun. So I thought maybe add some kind of crappy animation, kind of how originally South park was where it's like intentionally bad. Right. And I don't really have a budget to do good animation anyway. So it was just like, hey, maybe I could throw some funny animation, keep it a little different. So it's not the exact same stuff. And just as I find new people, 
um, throw clips that I can. And hopefully the, the main goal is really just to get people like yourself and other shows that people that are just getting into this can see it and maybe see a piece and be like, I like that. And then go to their actual sites and go to their, you know, videos and their channels and follow them from there. Not really necessarily me, use me as a stepping stone to get to those. Right. Or if you're already in the realm and you just missed a show and you want to see a clip, like, oh, I didn't know, you know, Ryan was interviewing so-and-so this week. I'll, uh, I'll go check that out. That's pretty cool. Cause sometimes, you know, even I miss stuff. There's so much, as you know, out there, you can miss a lot. So I, and I do too. Um, and I'm always trying to expand as well, because I feel like sometimes I can get in the same routine of the same people. Obviously I, you know, there, there's a reason I go to a lot of them, but I, I do want to kind of expand it as well, you know, not just keep the same stuff going. But yeah, that's kind of a nutshell. It's just a recap show, highlighting clips, never really the full deal, um, just to either for people to check in or essentially really to share for those, I hate saying the word normies, but more people to like, you know, I'm not that censored as much yet. Obviously, YouTube has their issues, but because I'm not a high level person and I'm not really censored, it's a good way to get it out there for people to see. And they could, you know, I'm, I'm on the Spotify and other things like that, so they could just clip it see it and then if they want to go to my site that's just a directory to get to people like yourself is really all it gotcha. is. gotcha mm -hmm. yeah kind of it sounds like what you're doing is very similar to what we do here at liberty radio you know mm -hmm. highlighting the people who aren't getting the boost yeah uh, on the interweb so that they have another avenue uh mm -hmm. to to get their work out and then hopefully bring people in, redirect them to that source. And, you know, thereby they end up discovering even more. Exactly. Awesome. So what is your process like as you're going through a week's worth of media and trying <laughs> to figure out what clips you're going to include and what's going to end up on the cutting room floor? Sure. Uh, you know, a lot of it as I have my main kind of follows. So I'm always just seeing what's popping up on my phone as far as, uh, you know, podcast version. A lot of times, sometimes that is video. I will definitely every morning, it's not the safest, but I'm usually streaming AM wake up. Um, so it's as I'm driving in and so I have the video going sometimes I'll, that's why sometimes if you'll see, I see you in the comments too, it's, uh, I have some difficulty getting uh, comments in while I'm driving, but I'm so I'm stuck in traffic. Don't worry, for so don't long. worry. I won't tell anybody. Okay, <laughs> I just stuck. I, I eventually <laughs> I'm gonna get in an accident one of these days, but uh, I'm stuck in traffic so long. It's a good way to kill time. You know, I love music too, but sometimes music almost gets me too more riled up. You know, in traffic, and uh, it's a good distracting. Um, you know, back in the old days, in my older days of more not being prone to you know independent media and in the mainstream i used to listen to howard stern a lot in the morning because there's just something to listen to before he went banana land and uh and that was a good way to get me off and this is so much better because i can you know i can listen to a you know when ryan shows ryan christiana it goes four hours i can break those down or you know grand theft world or you know a good James Corbett new world next week. Whitney's got a new interview, you know, so many other people I know I'm missing. I have those list of shows basically to get to your question <laughs> is uh, I'll listen to them kind of go through and I'll kind of mark mental notes, sometimes write it down, notch it in my phone and I'll, I'll really try to remember, okay, this minute mark. And a lot of times I might just stop listening at that point. So I know where it left off and then I'll go back. And other times I will, scour a lot of times i do i go through odyssey a lot because it's a good i love odyssey the fact that i can download directly off it that helps a lot when you're trying to clip stuff you know um and so a lot of times i'll find a lot of the people i i follow see what they got during the week check through it if something sparks me you know i will still check for titles just something that kind of catches my eye go through it and if i think i can kind of fit that in and have a good clip i'll I'll definitely, you know, slide it in. And now I kind of, now that, you know, Steve's graciously put me on AM wake up on Friday mornings, I've, uh, I thought it'd be kind of nice and fun to do kind of a recap of theirs too. Cause they do have so many good guests and they're so, I mean, it's a, it's a four hour sometimes show every, you know, yeah. day. So it's a it's, good way it's to a, a hell of a labor of love is what yeah. I would call it. And it's, yeah. it really shows through. Uh, mm -hmm. with the quality that they're capable of producing with basically like rudimentary equipment. 
you know? Yeah. I, I don't know how they do it. It's, it's very impressive how they pull this off day in and day out and the amount of time it must take to get, I mean, just all the, you know, the clips they get in the every day, getting everything put together. Steve puts all that time on thumbnails, even that people don't realize sometimes how much he even puts in the artwork, um, you know, and, and the guests that they get on a weekly basis is very impressive. Um, so that's one I like to not only listen to, but I try to do kind of sometimes some funny ones because they obviously have some good humor and uh, other good like guest clips that maybe I would have probably put in anyway, but now I can kind of clip that at the end. And then that way, Steve likes to come on live at the end. So when it's live, we're not going to play that, but uh, on the actual podcast or the YouTube or the r full rumble version or Odyssey version, it'll uh, it'll definitely play, you know, his clip. So anyone who missed it, because it is easy. You're not going to catch everything every week. I mean, uh, I guess the one blessing I have of crappy traffic is how much I can listen, you mm. know, and intake a lot of the stuff. I mean, it's kind of a blessing in that sense, but as much as it drives me nuts and takes away from my life, <laughs> it's, uh, uh, it could be worse. Obviously if there's a lot worse stuff in the world than traffic, oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you could be working for somebody else. You know, uh, as opposed exactly. to working for yourself, because I, I still remember back in 2020, early 21, living in the D.C. metro area, I was doing the exact same thing. You know, I was having to drive 30, 40 minutes, sometimes an hour a day to get to wherever it was I was supposed to be working that day. That's like, I don't know, 15 miles away. Mm -hmm. And you got to fill that time somehow. You know, you can either do it with music, which what I like to listen to when I'm driving is, is typically very fast and very aggressive. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work in rush hour traffic. <laughs> no, it really no. doesn't. So like podcasts are the, the perfect fit. I think that's why talk radio became such mm -hmm. a huge format, especially like from the seventies on is people realized that that was actually a better match for bumper to bumper traffic than any of the music formats were 100 percent. no I, I i couldn't agree more on that i even remember you know my dad ironically used to work for the federal government and we used to live in just outside of dc in harper's ferry uh west virginia and so he'd, take the, he'd drive there yeah and then yeah. take the train in and to this day i know he had to go to dc a lot even when we lived in oregon and other states all over the country and, you know, it's always his least favorite area to go just because of the, you know, the, well, you know, it's DC and in general, but, you know, the lobbyists, the sleazy politicians, cause he wasn't political. He just, just worked for the, you know, the, uh, under the agriculture department and mm. just dealing with all those people. And yeah, the traffic, like you said, even here as bad as the traffic can get, just cause it's the way it's laid out is he would, he would do a lot of talk radio and he said, you know, he's not a classical music guy, but He's like, I, sometimes I just had to do it to calm him down because yeah. of how stressful, you know, traffic. And that was, he didn't, this is pre podcasts and things like that. So I get it. Like, and that makes sense with the talk radio, especially if you can get someone who's really, you got those political shows, right? Get the hard left, hard right. People really get into that. They can just continue from their TV into their car. Um, but I think this is what's so cool about, you know, shows like yours and others that we can actually you know, the, obviously there's downsides of technology and, and things like that, but this is kind of the plus of it, you know, that we can take advantage of this stuff and kind of like a pirate media, right? Like a pirate radio type, do your own thing, you know, while we can. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You mm -hmm. know, uh, and again, let that be a lesson for anyone listening. There's still a lot of freedom to be had on the internet in the media space. Yes, the, there's a lot of censorship. Yes, there's a lot of uh, infighting and, and you know, people trying to, to uh, badmouth each other and, and all of that sort of thing. And I'm, I'm guil as guilty of that as anybody else. But there is still an element of the DIY attitude that lives and thrives on the Internet right now. So, mm -hmm. like, if you've ever wanted to produce something, doesn't really matter what it is just give it a shot you know throw it oh, out yeah. there and and see what happens worst thing that's going to happen is five people watch it mm -hmm. that's the worst thing that's going to happen oh yeah and best thing is going to be anything better than that so <laughs> yeah. you know why not i mean and was that was that kind of your your thinking 
as you yeah. started to get into the media space? Yeah. Um, you know, it's kind of, I remember, you know, Ricky Verandas, I was talking to him and I know he's mentioned it and Scott mentioned it is, you know, you could, they've been doing it a lot longer. Right. And even when Joe Rogan started with his stuff, like it's, uh, every time someone starts one, it's like, ah, there's too many out there. Right. Each year, like 10 years ago, you could have said, there's just too many podcasts, you know, going on. And now you could definitely say, right. There's just too many shows, but it's not really, you can make your own niche. You can get into it find your own people um or like honestly for myself like i don't care how many people <laughs> i mean i i want to get the word out right for my own recognition i don't care i would just prefer if i can have a few friends that hey now i'm gonna watch am wake up or i'm gonna watch liberty radio now I'm like oh that's awesome that's good because you're not gonna get that information on the crap on tv or the radio that's all paid for by advertisers or big pharma or big you know you name it these are actual people who are invested in actual, you know, real news that's going on, real information and have best interests out. Um, and that's kind of, you know, my thought on that is how this is such a good avenue to go. And it's kind of endless, you know, limits on that. Yeah. Who cares if I had five people? I mean, in, in a way it's good. I, that means less censorship to a certain degree. It can kind of slip through stuff. Yeah. Um, there is something so, to be uh, said for flying under the radar. That's right. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look at Steve, you know, he's doing great and has numbers and look how much they throttle him. Right. I know. And yeah. Yeah. It's, it's unreal. Uh, the, the amount of pressure that they mm -hmm. apply to, uh, to that particular property. Man. Yeah. And you know, I'm lucky. I, I obviously have a, a, another job to do stuff. So this is just kind of on the side. Um, and I know you've helped me. I have another side project. A lot of it is just kind of saving information for future generations oh, and myself right. so i, don't I completely forget forgot about that yeah i've had some delays with our wrestling thing that six uh you know shout out to six and new prisoners uh those that project kind of took over and I, it's kind of as you know it's it's hard to get people scheduled on to send their stuff over and so i i still have quite a few you know i got a lot of people on there uh, but i still have a few on my list that just haven't been able to nail down dates so as soon as the wrestling thing's over i'm going to double down on getting them in and then i should have hopefully I'm really hoping by the summer I can get that, that project. And it's not like it's a secret. It's just as a, the name of it, um, you know, is operation white pill. And it's just individuals like yourself that I wanted to ask some questions that would kind of hopefully help future generations and parents learn how to kind of talk to their kids about stuff, uh, good information that each one has their own perspective on, you know, certain things, whether, whether it comes to schooling, homeschooling, current events, how to navigate media. Cause you guys are, well versed in that and that's kind of that project so hopefully i'll have that wrapped up you know this summer um but that's kind of goes into this as same the same kind of process of it may not seem like it's geared towards kids because of a lot of my reference points of cartoons <laughs> but for my own kids they have a sick sense of humor because they come from me and um if i can say stuff for them be like well actually yeah your teacher might have said this or you see this on the news or someone told you that but I can actually show you this person who has source material and can give you a different opinion and start questioning everything as you can, you know, like a Ryan Christian would say, it's a good motto to go by. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's, I think the way everyone should approach pretty much everything that they find to be new, you yeah. know, whether that's, that's information or a, a process for completing a task or whatever, um, mm -hmm. you know, with Liberty radio, one thing that we have always tried to focus on is being a conduit essentially for information right like we're mm. not here and and to you know a, a lesser extent i'll extend that out to kind of our greater community grand theft world media monarchy yeah um all the folks that that uh take part in union of the unwanted um mm -hmm. you know and the list goes on and on right um these aren't people that are presenting you information for the purpose of telling you what you're supposed to think about it. They're, they're just giving you the information and saying, this is what I think about it. You may come up with something completely different. That's, yeah. that's actually your job. You're supposed to figure out what your opinion on this yeah. topic is. And, you know, another, there's a lot of guys, I feel like you, you had him on recently. Did you have Wheezy on not too long ago? Yeah. A couple of weeks ago. Yeah. 
Yeah. And he's another good one who's really, you know, talking to people with complete opposite views, you know, and having a good oh, yeah. discussion about things. And not in that old school, you know, what was that guy, Chris Matthew? You're watching hardball, that kind of guy. Like, let's just throw some crap and argue to people on a screen. Like, yeah, he's doing old, real uh, good. Was debates. it the old Tucker show, Crossfire? Yeah. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Like, that's just to get dumb ratings and people fired up. Like, what he's doing is actually legitimately. No, we have like different opinions on things. I'm going to prod it. Let's get to the bottom of stuff and let's have a good conversation. And they comes from, you know, a good place with that. And like you being that conduit of showing other places and, and those people, yeah, they're just showing the information and saying, well, here's where I got it. Here's how I came to my conclusion. Maybe let's even say it was something with like a, a study, you know, on something and there's their data and take it as you will. I mean, there's kind of, you can kind of read the tea leaves on stuff, but you should question. I mean, question what I put out there. I'm not an expert by any means. I'm just trying to figure this stuff out like anyone else. So I'll, if it's interesting, I'll post it and, you know, I'll, I'll probably get some stuff wrong here and there. Or I'm not really putting my opinion out there, obviously, but uh, you can kind of tell by the content I put on where I stand <laughs> with stuff. But uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah. that's, that's actually <laughs> one of the things that I appreciate about the presence of the presentation style of the independent review, right? It's, it's literally just saying, Hey, here's, here's uh, this topic being presented mm -hmm. by this person. We get through that, right? Which mm -hmm. is, is usually a, a, a decent sized morsel to digest. Yeah. And then, all right. Now we're going to go to this topic, you know, with, with this person presenting the information and it's just mm -hmm. literally like a series of, you know, little, little bites. Yeah. Yeah. And it's an easy, um, easy way to kind of digest. You could skip from part to part. Maybe you just missed a clip on someone. And yeah, that way it's just, I mean, I'm not saying people's opinions don't matter, obviously, because they do. But I mean, who am I at a certain degree? It's like, hey, I'd rather just give you the information than I haven't done the research that they've done or had the length of hours of interviewing or, you know, so here's just what they've done. Take it as you will. I thought it was interesting. Maybe some people don't, you know, but that's better than just me. Hey, I saw a few minutes of a clip. This is how I feel. You know, it's better to just say, no, here's a few minutes of this clip. It's interesting. Maybe we should look into it more. And if it sparks someone's interest, I think it's good. Then they can jump into it and, and hopefully follow that person and support their, you know, media. That's another thing I really, I don't want to see any of this go, you know? So I really want to do my best to kind of get it out. So more, the more people, hopefully the better. Uh, you know, to help support those, those media members. Well, yeah. Cause uh, mm -hmm. if uh, there's no financial support, eventually all this goes away. That's, exactly. I mean, and that's, I that's just how it works. Yeah. And people don't, you know, the value for value, which is a good system, but, and it's good that you're not having these people bought out by major corporations, right? This is the whole point of it. So, but I think what people forget sometimes is also they kind of need support too. Then they're yeah. doing this, for really nothing they're not getting these big contracts or uh, you know every now and then we'll do you know people do sponsorships with you know products they like and that's you know that's fine that's their own deal like as long as they believe in it it's not some creepy sell out you know thing um but yeah they got to realize i mean they're kind of doing like look at steve they're just complete value for value you know like a lot of them it's they kind of need help so if i can get it out to get those people help the more the merrier. I, I don't have a ton of, you know, obviously followers. I'm pretty new. I, I did, I started this last year, so it's a pretty small, uh, a, a venue, but even just hearing something, I had a guy, uh, wrote on Steve's channel that said, Hey, I saw the independent review. Don't know how he followed me. And then he found Steve and now he's hooked watching every single morning. So that kind of stuff is awesome. Like, I mean, I love that. Like, so you were the you gateway find, drug. Yeah. Somehow I'm the gatekeeper now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah as yeah. i mean that's cool i don't know how the hell he found me but hey like more power I mean, that's to how maybe works. i slipped through and those cracks right i've i've had uh people found me uh in liberty radio before they found grand theft world and richard grove and i'm like how yeah. is that even possible that's crazy yeah. yeah yeah but i mean that's that's how the model is supposed to work at least mm -hmm. as far as the way that i originally drew it up from the beginning yeah you know, Liberty mm -hmm. Radio was always meant to be a vehicle to uh, spread the greater Grand Theft World gospel, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and that's exactly what independent review is for the greater independent media. 
Um, yeah. Which is, uh, again, just a phenomenal undertaking to produce that much content on a weekly basis with everything else uh, that you've got going on, not just being a father and a husband, but also uh, being a, an accomplished uh, entrepreneur as well. Uh, a lot of folks may not be aware that, you know, you also run Big Frog Beaverton which mm-hmm. produces merch for uh, Scott Armstrong's Rebunked News, for Steve and Chris at AM Wake Up, as well as for your very own Liberty Radio, ladies That's and gentlemen. Right. Whenever you get a Liberty Radio t-shirt, this is the man that made it all possible. That's right. We, it goes right back to you guys, you know, and, and that way we don't have to do you know, these big Shopify, I mean, I remember even Charlie, Scott told me, Charlie, I was just trying to make a shirt just for, um, I think it was Acapulco, when, an, an Acapulco, and he wanted mm-hmm. to get like the injected thing. From his own site, he does it just to make a custom one and they wouldn't do it. So, and you kind of know where some of this, we also do, we're still working on revamping Scott and Shelly, Shelby's injected uh, site. So we do that as well. Oh, wow. Nice. Um, yeah. That's obviously thanks to Scott putting us in there. And yeah, the very first run, a lot of them were coming from those Shopify's, which I get. I'm not trying to, but I can see if we've all, if we all saw what happened in 2020 with the censorship to the insane degree, um, it's easy to forget. Like I even remember when I was trying to find certain people, I'm glad I found them prior, but not to keep jumping on like a Ryan Christian, but like, that's all right. I got we give censored. Ryan plenty of love here. That's yeah. Funny. Like he got, I couldn't find him on a podcast venue until I found like two. He was getting just dropped from every single mm-hmm. one. And, uh, you know, I forget now he's, you know, he can, they're allowing more stuff for now. Right. As weird as that is to certain things. Um, so I forget even myself how bad things were. So it's even to that degree of a shirt shop can get very censored if they don't, it's not their mantra. And we're, you know, we went through the gamut in 2022. So we tried to, you know, do our best to stay open. Oregon was a pretty strict <laughs> a place to say the least. Uh, it uh, follows basically everything Washington, California do. And it doesn't mean the whole state is like that. It's just certain areas. Just you could say that with any state, right? Um, but we did our best to keep as open as possible, try to stay in business. So we could pay our employees. We're pretty small. We're like four people. Um, but it's kind of nice. Though. Again, the nice thing to take advantage of some technologies, I can set up online stores now get people set up and then we can make a little, you guys can make a little and try to help support, you know, independent media on top of that and a small business. That's cool. And we got Ricky now, Ricky Verandas joined us. Oh, nice. He just, yeah, he just asked me. Yeah. I was very excited. He reached out as pretty honored and he uh, just set his store up. So we just switched over to him and you have a few people that have um, reached out as well. So we'll see if we can get uh, kind of more things going on. We're going to be doing the third eye carnival stuff for Steve's uh, event. So that'll be cool. We're trying to get, you know, I, I think I just put it up today actually. So more shirts for that event that they came up with the cool artwork for that. Oh, nice. So that's awesome. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I saw, I think, I don't remember who it was. Somebody had posted some stickers mm-hmm. uh, in the, in the telegram channel for AM wake up earlier today. Yes. Was, uh, Gomez Marmot 24. <laughs> I made those up. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it'd be kind of, I thought Steve would get a kick out of that. He's like, Oh, those are badass. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, you got it. I know he's been wanting stickers for a while. So we can, um, we were throwing a few in there just to see what would not, no pun intended, see what would stick, you know? Yeah. To, you oh, that's okay. Want. Again, uh, Yona is on here too, sometimes three <laughs> yeah. days a week. So uh, puns are, are not unfamiliar territory either. <laughs> So are you guys actually going to have physical merch available for purchase uh, out in Pueblo? I think so. I I was talking to Steve. I know he wants to order a bunch ahead of time. So I think we'll basically have it online. People can order ahead of time. And then I think they're going to probably have some for the actual event itself. So if you're there, that's even a better time. You could just buy it straight from Steve. Oh, hell yeah. uh, Yeah. And just get on the spot. So that'd be really cool. And I'm sure if they sold out or anything like that, we'll just, uh, they'll give, our info so or make some more. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Heck yeah. I look yeah. forward to that. I'm, I'm going to do my damnedest to get up to Colorado in July. I really, like, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting to have a tree fall on the house. Like oh. 
Jeez. not even 90 days after I purchased it. Um, but even with all the craziness that's been going on here in East Texas, I'm still going to try and get up there. So yeah. hopefully, hopefully I'll be up there. Are you planning to make the trip? The more and more I, I keep seeing on it, it's like getting me an itch to try to make it. So maybe I'll just, I mean, I might just, I, I don't know about flying. It's always so crazy and expensive. Yeah. I might just try to, it's not that crazy far from here to drive. I I grew up, we never flew. So we used to drive all over and we moved all over. So I, I liked a good road trip. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I think it'd be kind of fun. I, the more and more I see it, I was like, gosh, I really got to get out there. There's too many cool people showing up. seems like a kick-ass venue. Last year seemed really cool. So, and I love what they're doing. So yeah, if I, and it's nice to actually, I haven't been able to meet anybody face to face. So it'd be kind of cool, you know, to yeah. actually get some more interpersonal, real, real life. Yeah. You know? Instead of just hanging out with everybody on the internet <laughs> all the yeah. time, we can actually get together and all go and like have a beer or smoke J yeah. or hell yeah. Uh, you know, whatever people are into. If you like exactly. the black tar, you can stay over there. That's fine. <laughs> hell yeah. We don't need any of that juju around here, but there you go. <laughs> so, so how Ryan, how did you originally get started with big frog? Oh yeah. Um, I mean, again, very lucky. Um, you know, I come from a pretty, I wouldn't necessarily call it blue collar, but you know, pretty very average family. We just paycheck to paycheck kind of get by. I'm not going to say we're the worst off, right? Um, uh, way more. There's always someone worse off than you. I mean, we were able to have food. It might've been the cheapest, crappy stuff you could get, but we were good. You know, we, we made it by, we were happy at a good family. Um, but obviously money's not like something I have, <laughs> you know, going on. So when I got out of, uh, school, I was kind of looking for stuff. And my buddy that I know was looking to get into like a, a franchise type. And we just kind of found it and it is like a franchise, but it's each individually owned. And it's one of those franchises where you can kind of just be your own place. So the nice thing about that is you can, there's no real rules other than the keep the name of the store, keep the colors correct, you know, um, certain things of like just how it looks, but it's yours, you know, it's, that's your business, you know, make your shirts, make it your own, be part of the community. That was a big thing was like, get involved in your community and, you know, get with the clubs, get with the town, which I like because that was actually a huge thing. I feel like saved us in around 2020 by making those connections with people. And I know, Steve, Scott, other people, yourself talk about making these connections with people and having good connections. Cause that is kind of the, that secondary system we need. Right. So you can make trades of stuff, make a trade for meat, make a trade for other kind of food, make a trade for work. Maybe I need some electrical, right? That's a big thing in, in business, regardless of what you have to kind of trade left and right and make those cool connections to kind of help people. I mean, as simple as it is, it is just shirts, right? But um, it's not like you're changing the world with t-shirts. Everybody needs like, clothing, man. Yeah. And you can, you know, you can put fun messages, right? If you want to make a statement or if you just need it for your business or, or something, it's, it's a good way to just meet people, make connections. So that's kind of how we got into it. He's obviously the main guy that got behind it and asked me to join him. Cause I've known him since fourth grade football. <laughs> and, uh, um, I was like, heck yeah. And you know, we get along. I know people always say never go in business with your friends, but I mean, I, we're not really those type of controversial people, you know, that get on each other. We've been fine. We've been good buddies. And that was 2011 when we started, uh, kind of getting into it really open doors, 2012. So we've been going since then, just kind of grinding. Um, and the rest is kind of it. <laughs> we don't good years, bad years. <laughs> it, it comes and goes. So what would you say is the most valuable lesson that you have learned so far running your own business? Um, appreciate, I always do appreciate our employees, but that is always one of the hardest things is to find good help. Um, people that work with you. Cause we all try to do stuff on the same team. It's not just like, I'm not here, go do it. You know, it's a, it's a very hands-on, you know, you think of other types of businesses or franchises. Let's, I don't want to just say McDonald's, but it's an easy one. You, you're not going to see an owner, right? That's a different thing. Um, Starbucks, you're not going to see an owner of those. They do obviously own them, but they own multiple. They have millions of dollars and things like that. These are smaller kind of types of businesses. So to be part of that group, you know, it, it makes you appreciate when you do have good help. Um, it, it's hard to keep people because you can only 
being a small business too, you can only pay so much and do so much and it's hard to give time to benefit. So we also understand, I get people aren't going to want to stay forever, but that's a big thing, getting good help, getting good people. Um, the other thing I'd say is just making good connections with people is a big thing that I've learned. That's been kind of fun. It's a, it's a good thing. And, um, you know, take some work getting out there. I'm not a salesy kind of guy. I don't like marketing. I did have it in like a minor, but I, I'm not, I don't like that sales. Hey, you know, I, I can't stand that kind of stuff. It it's, um, so we're, we've always just been word of mouth friends. People reach out to us and just do our best to make a good, you know, product form, stand by it. I mean, it is just shirts, it, you know, so it's like, Hey, we want to make sure you like it, make sure it works well for you. If we can help you out, um, the more, the better. So make those good connections for other, you know, possible thing like Scott, I wouldn't have, uh, that's a perfect example of getting into this, making shirts for Scott and look where that's now I'm talking to you. I mean, it's yeah. kind of crazy that all these people I've listened to and now I'm talking to just based off of selling some shirts. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of how it, it tends to unfold though. You know, mm -hmm. it's it, one thing leads to another. And if you're, if you're doing your networking correctly, uh, as your network grows, uh, so does your opportunities. Uh, mm -hmm. Typically, so does your, your income streams. Um, like all of this stuff just scales from going out and talking to people, meeting new people and, and finding out what they're into and what they do and how you might, you know, be able to, to fit into uh, that groove that they've already got established for themselves and, and vice versa because it always, you know, should be a symbiotic type relationship where there's there is a give and a take right mm -hmm. um or maybe a a give and a receive would, would be yeah. a better way to, to put it not necessarily take um but yeah it 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 sounds to me like you have learned uh, a lot of just people skills from having to operate and grow the business would you say that's accurate yeah. Yeah. That's helped. I mean, I'm not a very extroverted type of person in general. I'm not going to be the first one to, I mean, if anyone even noticed me on the union last night, I, I, I forgot to say too much. I was a little in awe too. I'm just not the kind of guy who's going to jump in. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. That's just, that's just who I am. I'm kind of more on the quiet side, but it has helped with, you know, more interpersonal, making good connections, feeling more comfortable, you know, trust some people and then you trust some people too much and that's fine. But you kind of, it's a good, good way to read people too. Not that you ever know fully. Yeah, I would say so. It's a, it's been definitely helpful with, you know, interpersonal communications with that. Maybe not on the union for me, but other ways. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, you've been, cause you've been on a number of, uh, the union of the unwanted episodes now, uh, two now, two now, just two. But yeah. But okay. that's, well that's then I must me, have yeah. seen the very first one. Or, or yeah. listen to it because I, I, I specifically remember that. And then I remembered uh, you saying, I think I saw it in a chat somewhere. You were, you were mm -hmm. talking about this coming Monday, you were going to be on again. And I was yeah. like, damn, it's like, he's I know, just I, getting on every union episode now. I don't even know how I, 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 I felt bad the first one I came on halfway through. Cause I, you know, kids, I had to drop them off and, I, and they were traffic. And I was like, I, so I got on there. And even I've been lucky too. Sam's been on both of those. <laughs> Paul usually, you know, he's always so, you know, on, on tour and stuff. And yeah, it was a good crew. And um, I kind of jumped in late and Ricky was nice enough to kind of push me in, you know, a little, he knows. Uh, well, and I that was, I was good. actually so, on that one. You were, I, cause yeah. I made the mistake too of zoom. I forget with zoom, you can change the view. So at first I only saw like the four people on top. And I wasn't, you know, and then it only pops up when someone talks. Right. And then I realized you can do like a whole grid view. And I was like, oh, okay, there's a lot more <laughs> people. Uh, yeah, and then sometimes I think back and I'm like, you know, I'm not an expert in any of this. And so many of those, gosh, when I see like, you know, t on or, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, jack your skirt up or anyone or Steve, like I just, I don't feel very, very intelligent. <laughs> so I want to make sure I say the, not to be, I'm not trying to censor, right? But I just don't want to sound like an idiot at the same time, if that right. makes sense. And uh, make sure I can pull some weight and, and say something correct yesterday. I just, I didn't get in the right window. And then by that time that that show can move fast. So it went to a new subject and I didn't want to bring up an old one, but the first one, yeah, I think we were on the same one. That was a few 
maybe like four weeks or so ago. It was after yeah. it was before the Adam Curry one. Yeah, uh, but, it was uh, it was whenever uh, me and Charlie got together. It was yeah. it was the exact same day because mm-hmm. that and and our interview were separated by like two hours or something. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Charlie. So awesome. Charlie, He's yeah, he wasn't joking when he said that. Uh, you know, we'd basically spent the entire day together. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Charlie's a cool dude. He's another one. And I had just got on that after Ricky reached out to me. So we had just talked like the day before or maybe oh, a little right. bit before. That's right. Cause you had, um, you had done Ricky's show. Uh, recently, yeah. We had about we? a, almost a, it was like over three hours of just shooting the shit and we yeah. didn't realize how long it was going. <laughs> it was good though. Yeah. It was fun. I was, I was, uh, you know, humbled to get on that to any of these things. It's like, it's, it's just, it's funny when you put it through your ear and then all of a sudden you're on them. And, uh, Charlie was actually also one of the very first him and Corbett. When we talk about the operation white pill, I couldn't believe Corbett was the first one. I just yeah. threw an email out within like, I don't know, a couple hours. He, he was like, I I'll, I'll get it to you. And he was like, by the next couple of days had it. And I was blown away i mean i didn't he didn't know who the heck i was i could have been some you know weirdo or anything so i was impressive charlie was another one who got right on it It was really cool and that's all also thanks to scott because he helped you know with emails to connections of that um corbett i actually just sent just on a whim through his, his website yeah and that was uh you know and people like yourself that got right back to me when i i got out it was really cool i'm not trying to shit on anyone who didn't <laughs> like I, it's fine i get it but i, I it's, it's impressive who when we're are. nobody yeah <laughs> but it, it blows my mind i was like because i it's you know it's very cool it feels it, good this this is a very um uh, welcoming is not not even the word um mm-hmm. it, it's a very accepting community of yes. media producers which is 180 degrees uh, in the opposite direction of what I encountered from the world for the majority of my life. Uh, I, I still don't quite know what to make of it at this point because it's, it's so completely different an experience from anything else I've ever had before. Um, it's, it's really quite amazing, which again uh, is another good reason for anyone that's listening to the sound of our voices right now that is thinking about doing something, just go ahead and start doing it. Put yourself in motion and start getting in touch with people and you never know uh, what might happen. Yeah. It's amazing. I mean, you hear so many people's stories of who helped them and who helped them and who helped them, you know, get me started or gave me a reference or put me on this. It's, it's crazy how it's kind of just trickled down. I can only at least, I'm with you in my lifetime. I've only had two kind of communities that are this welcoming. And when I, of all the sports I played, rugby is one that I still stand by where I've gone through where I'm not saying you can't find bad eggs, right? Cause you can, but overall it's one of the most accepting communities. And this was another one where I didn't think I would find that again to where, again, I'm sure there's some bad eggs somewhere. Not everyone's perfect, but I've only ran into amazing people, the friendliest people, the most accepting people willing to, you know, go out on a limb, help you out, make a video of this, do that for you. It's, it's, it's awesome. And it's very encouraging. It's uplifting. And it, I think it helps, you know, keep you motivated to keep going. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it has, and you know, I could be completely wrong about it, but I think it has a lot to do uh, with our understanding of how this world works, right? Like mm-hmm. most of us that are uh, in the freedom-minded uh, portion of the independent media, like true freedom, mm-hmm. uh, we understand that it's a rigged game and everything. The deck is stacked against us from the moment of birth, right? And that everybody, if if you're not part of the elite, then you're you're part of the base. You're part of the foundation. There's the people at the top, and then there's everybody underneath them. If you're not at the top, you're you're being trampled on for pretty much mm-hmm. the majority of your life. And I think the fact that a lot of us understand that that is the situation that we're working under, it allows for uh, greater patience, greater acceptance. Uh, dare I say, even greater empathy 
for yeah. people that we may not even be very familiar with because we all understand just how hard we have it individually. And we know that pretty much nobody else is, is getting special favors either. So I think mm-hmm. it, that's one of the things that really contributes to that mindset in this group. I don't know. You might disagree with me on that. No, 100%. I, I think it, it comes from so many in this community, you can tell who are genuine. Um, you know, when we get to the, the upper gatekeeper, I'm not trying to say compromise, but you know, that is a, there is that level of, like you're saying, there's like people are like beneath them, right? Yeah. And when we talk about this community and how Tucker. much they go We're through, talking about Tucker. Yeah. Yeah. Tucker, you, there's all kinds of those at the, at that level, right? Yeah. Russell's, um, I mean, you name it, what the pools, all those guys, like they, they've gone to a level, whether the, well, they well, started at that level. Tucker's, yeah. Tucker did. And look yeah. at his background. Yeah. And his dad, um, so many of those guys, they're just, they're already going to be at there. They're not going to be genuine. They can't be in that sense where everything here is very organic to a sense and genuine to where I think people, you, you see that. It's kind of like just meeting a normal person out there. If, you know, in the regular world, you can kind of tell sometimes when people are being very fake and when people are kind of put on a, maybe they're just being reserved or they're just being over the top fake and not genuine. And I've this kind of group, you can tell because yeah, like you said, they're, they're going through it. So they kind of know. And I think they can also read when people come in, if they're genuine or not for the most part and are trying their best to help, you know, get more people involved. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, again, it, it it's like nothing I've, I've ever experienced before. Mm-hmm. So I always have trouble finding what I think are the proper words to, yeah. uh, to try and describe it. But, you know, again, we're, we all have the same guns pointed at us, right? We're all trying to dodge the, the same bullets. You know, we're all being censored. We're all being shadow banned. We're, we're all being uh, data siloed. Mm -hmm. Uh, and everything else. Um, I mean, just in the short amount of time that, that you've been part of the media space, Ryan, like what have you personally seen as far as censorship increasing? It's, I feel like it's going in weird waves depending on the topic when I'm, I knew, and I already knew going into making it anything I put, if I'm watching the shows that are getting censored, if I'm highlighting those shows, they're going to get censored, right? Unless you do the thing where you kind of, I, I understand some people, it's not really that terrible of an idea where they have like a channel on Rockfin or Rumble, Odyssey, maybe all three, and they'll just put certain clips on YouTube. It's not a, not really a dumb idea to kind of get around YouTube to bring people to your actual site, right? You then get them off YouTube. I'm not a, opposed to that. I haven't really figured that one out. I, uh, I think my very first one, it was, Ryan with Peter McCullough. <laughs> so I knew that one actually got, I got a warning as it was uploading. Oh, wow. and that was my first one. And then they told me I it's go serious to when they do that. Yeah. And it was the very first clip. The So I, I mean, I was kind of just like, here we go. Let's go. And it was, uh, yeah, they offered a, a class you could take an online one. I've been lucky enough to where I'm not doing it intentionally, but some they allow for some reason, some they don't and they'll give you like a week or two suspension. Right. And then um, I'll get another one. And they said, well, if you get one more, it's like permanently suspended. I was like, well, that okay. Um, but that hasn't happened yet. Then it goes, oh, wow. then the strike disappears, you know, after a few months or whatever. And then it goes back. Uh, R- Rumble. I feel like I had a couple weird things at first with my YouTube link to it. Mm-hmm. And then I tried to unlink it and that seemed to do better to where Rumble kind of, and again, I'm not necessarily all stand by by not. I appreciate they allow it on there, but I'm not going to trust, you know, something run by Peter Thiel. <laughs> like that's just not. I, <laughs> uh, and Odyssey, I, I don't really know what's going on with Odyssey. I hope it sticks around. I know there was some stuff with like the library um, portion of it. As long as it's still there, I, I love it because I can. I think that's a lot of. There's a lot of good content on there. Um, Rockfin, I'm not on there, but it's it's been good because with Steve. Um, so that's a good avenue, I think. Uh, as far as other censorship, I'm trying to think. Really, just honestly, just YouTube. It still hits me in there. It's it's gone in waves 
especially with the COVID stuff. It's, mm-hmm. it's hit or miss, very hit or miss. In the beginning, it was a lot. That was last year. I got a lot, a lot away with it in the summer somehow. And then it kind of sparked back up this fall. I haven't personally gotten a lot with the Israel Gaza stuff, even though I post a lot of it. I know other people have, so maybe I've just slipped through it. I have started just not tagging anything. That seems to help. Mm. It's almost like you put a bullseye on yourself. Um, well, yeah, that's that's how they um, the the hashtag is used to mm-hmm. um, uh, categorize uh, whatever yeah. it is that you're trying to publish. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a, it's basically like a stamp that gets put on it as it's being uploaded into the system. And if that hashtag has been flagged, good luck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a, uh, I've been I'm trying to think of, I think the only ones I did was those wrestling videos. I would put stuff on there to take, but there's, there's nothing they're going to get me on those. But I have heard they can get on there and then retroactively take your stuff. So I could see that happening. Oh yeah, there's been people where they do that, even like a year later. So I'm I'm sure that'll come. <laughs> or in Eventually. some cases, ten years later, if your catalog yeah. goes back that far. I mean, That's James true. Evan Pilato is he was uh, talking uh, just a few weeks ago. He got an email from YouTube, and they were like, "Yeah, this video that you published back in 2013, <laughs> it didn't violate our community guidelines then, but it does now. So we're going to pull oh. it." <laughs> That's yeah. insane. I mean, it doesn't shock me, but, uh, and shout out to James. That guy's awesome. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We try to, we try to pump media monarchy, uh, here on Liberty radio as often as possible. Cause again, if there were no media monarchy, there mm-hmm. might not be a Liberty radio. That's true. So you always have to pay homage to your forebears. Heck yeah. So what do you expect? Uh, going forward into 2024 now that you've got um, and and you can go any number of ways with this question but you've now got a year of full-fledged media production under your belt right you've been paying attention to the narratives in the news Mm -hmm. seeing how they're progressing on a weekly basis you know, you're now in the position where you've kind of created your own crystal ball that you can gaze into and uh, try to divine what the future might be. So uh, what do you see on the horizon for the rest of 2024? For the 2024, I think they're going to continue, obviously, this the election year fun, the election year fun of, you know, splitting one way or the other. I was, uh, I don't know who I was talking to that long ago, but it was, I felt like last year was very encouraging for a lot of issues that got brought up and got a lot more media attention. You know, a lot of the Ukraine stuff being exposed more, not that it wasn't from the get go, if you're following anything, but I'm talking more on like the very mainstream level to even get a Nick, you know, at exposing a lot of that, even though, as you know, they flipped their stance, what, two days before (laughs) the invasion. Um, But even like, you know, um, was it October 7th, September 7th? I can't remember the, whatever they tried to tie it in. Um, even that getting exposed more was encouraging. Um, you know, the Ohio, um, Pal- East Palestine, you know, a lot more people covering that I thought was good. So I got a more encouraged about it. And then it's almost like clockwork. The second an election year kicked in without, I was even thinking about it till other people started to mention it. It was like, Not that there's always some kind of psyop going, but it seemed like let's just cycle through. Let's get people pissed off at each other. Let's split one way or the other. Let's get people back on their team. We'll forget how much Mm -hmm. they used to hate that guy or what he did how many years ago Um, and get back on that left, right, you know, my team versus you team kind of thing where we really had a lot of people coming together. And, you know, I don't I don't have the historical sense and know and been involved because I wasn't really aware as much being younger. But it sounds like a lot of that happened around the Occupy time from just people's stories. I don't know, maybe you would know, you'd probably know better than a lot of people were kind of coming around that time. There was a lot of both sides kind of there, to there some was degree a, uh, pushing back more. Yeah, there was, there was, it was still an us versus them mentality, mm-hmm. but maybe for the first time, definitely for the first time in my lifetime the the proper target for them 
mm. had been chosen, which was mm-hmm. the bankers, right? Because yeah. we had just gone through uh, the 2008 financial collapse, mm-hmm. right? And banks got all that money from the government, all of the, the people got the shaft, uh, and there was a lot of ill will towards mm-hmm. both the government and the financial institutions. Um, and then it just kind of went back to business as usual. You're right. And people have a short memory of that stuff. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, even the, gosh, I mean, you know, this is like preaching to the choir and I'm sure all your listeners, it's the same thing, but you know, with the two party thing, I've never, I will say this. I, I, I'm very fortunate with, um, my upbringing with my dad being very independent in a sense, you know, he did, he's a career, you know, federal government employee. And I have other relatives that have worked. I've had aunt do, she was CIA, then DEA even. Um, I've had uh, kind of a few other like us marshal type, nothing high at level, but they've all been just your average person kind of working in the deal. Yeah. And my dad was more just on the agriculture side. But, you know, you go through the gamut and you see all this stuff he would show, you know, like the Fauci type people, even in his under the USDA, you have all these mini branches and people actually working on the ground doing what they're doing. And then you have these representatives that have nothing to do and don't even know anything about the agency that get just put in as a official, you know, and basically what he would get to a lot of what I like now is kind of he's like, yeah, just kind of question things and this whole left, right. It's just going to switch. It's just an act. Congress is always going to say, you know, there's a, you know, we're not, we're going to shut down the government. I was like, please. And even he's like, please. And they always somehow figure out a way. Right. Yeah. Miraculously at the 11th hour, every, every time. time. And he, he, he'd watch it. He'd know he had been, you know, doing it since, you know, the seventies, he's like, trust me. Cause he's not on the political side. He could see all this junk. That's why he'd always tell me the nastiness of these, um, lobbyists that would even come up to him. I mean, they're just disgusting, you know, people. I mean, he even had a lot of stuff I got to hear later about, you know, the Clinton foundation and stuff like that. And he's not a left right guy. He's just like, that's why he just kind of stuck in the middle and stayed away from that stuff and just, you know, did his job. He was very, um, for a guy who worked for the government, very, uh, he knew what it was, right? So he wouldn't even use the government car he didn't want to waste gas. He didn't want to, he's like, these are people's, this is my salary is your money. So I don't, I represent people like, even though he's not a politician, he knows it's like right. where his money is essentially coming from. Right. And so he was very hyper aware of, you can't no donations. I'm not going to use extra gas money. I'm going to use my own money. Those kind of things. He even made sure they were under budget every year because he knew how ridiculous it was. People would, and businesses do this too is well we got to meet budget so let's just spend a bunch of crap the last second so we can go get more money next year so we get more next year yeah mm -hmm. and he's like well that just destroys stuff too because then you're just spending more and recklessly wasting more money he's like if you don't need it you should be coming under budget to be efficient that's these are people this is this isn't like a a corporation i mean it is a corporation right but it's like this isn't a in a sense uh, a corporation's money right it's this is the people's money so you shouldn't be wasting it so that's kind of I got a different aspect of that growing up in a good way. So I didn't get to see, he would tell me the bad size of government and politics. I don't know how I got so off track with this, but basically what I was saying is it it was nice to, to see where even in the government, there are normal people and people are just trying to do things and the higher ups really throw it out of loops and just use people as pawns. And it's, it's a, a nice way to see, even in the government, people know, let's not go left or right. It's just a joke. It's the same. What's the old saying? I, I even threw it on my desk. Same bird, two wings, right? Two mm-hmm. wings, same bird. It's all the same. Uniparty. They all scratch each other's back. Like you said, last second, the deals always get done. They want to say something. They all are bought and paid by the lobbyists. It's pretty disgusting. Um, and the only way you're going to get there is get bought and paid. So he was very a uh, proponent of like local stuff, which I still think I'm not saying that can't be bought and paid for. Cause I think any level can, mm-hmm. but I think you have a better chance, you know, like a school board. Um, if you're in a smaller town, I think that helps than a bigger town to do things like that. So at least that gave me a good perspective of questioning those things, but then it just, 
getting back to my point as I'm dragging on. Sorry. Uh, You're good, is, man. Uh, we, got, we got all night if you want to go all night. Here we go. We'll blow uh, that three-hour show out of the water. <laughs> Fuck it. We ball. <laughs> That's right. Um, people, very short memories on these, you know, these election years. And people that would be screaming about, you know, Donnie about operation warp speed as they should. And then you just forget about it again. Cause now you're pissed at the other old guy. And it's like, did you not, you know, it's like, what I, and, and I don't, it's not like I have a solution. I don't know. Like I, I like the idea of people used to be able to vote as an abstain, abstaining mm -hmm. from voting, you know, as like a protest. And it doesn't even seem like you get that option anymore. I don't really have a solution. I wish I, you know, I did, but it obviously, Oh, in South park terms, you always get a douche or a turd sandwich as your choice. Um, that's basically it. And if it's not really a choice, cause they, I don't, I mean, I don't think it is. I don't think we have a say anything with federal personally, but, um, but no, that's why I call it a selection mm -hmm. cause you're the, all you're doing is picking from the two choices that you've been given. Exactly. And that's not a choice. No. Yeah. It's what they picked for you. Exactly. And, but it's amazing how easily. I've probably said this too many times, but in a world with how many choices, pronouns, genders that we've expanded to, they like to make anything else controversial into everything has to be binary. It's either left, right, wrong, right. Yeah. You know, whatever you have to pick a side, there is no gray. Well, maybe we could look in between and maybe both these suck, or maybe there's somewhere of you know, the news in between. It's like, no, it's either. No, you have to pick one. Yeah. And it, and even goes with, I think that's what's funny. You see so much. You can, you should be able to like crap on any president, right? That doesn't mean just because I crap on Biden, I'm a Trump guy, or just because you're anti, you know, one thing, you're pro the other. It, it's kind of silly, but that's how the news, I, I got to give them credit. They do a very good job of pushing that narrative. And they, it, I know they're crumbling, but they're, you know, they're, they're dousing in other levels of YouTube and stuff, but they yeah. do a good job of that, I think. Yeah, most most people don't know it yet, but corporate news will survive uh, the the coming collapse of the the television system mm -hmm. because all that's going away, folks. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably as soon as the next twelve months, uh, people won't really be watching television as we've known it for I don't know the last seventy years or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, that ain't going to be around much longer. It's uh, on its last legs at this point. But the point I'm trying to make is uh, they still have the same level of funding regardless yes. of whether anybody is watching them or not. So they're just going to continue producing and they'll just find other uh, avenues to distribute it to. Mm -hmm. Which, is, again, is why I think it's so important that we need to get as large of a foothold in the independent media right now as we possibly can, because our time of dominating this space mm -hmm. is over. It, it ended once Tucker left Fox news and went to Twitter and started producing his shows there. hundred percent. Like the, the takeover of our space has already begun mm -hmm. and we're just going to get progressively squeezed out as time goes by. It's only going to get worse. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're, we're going to have to fight to, to oh, keep yeah. the spaces that we've built. That's mm -hmm. what it's going to come down to. And unfortunately, not all of us are going to survive that fight. No. That's why we need as many as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if I have to, I have no, and I'm, I'm not trying to get on a soapbox and go on a diatribe here. Um, but if that's the purpose that Liberty Radio is is meant to serve, to be a sacrifice so that, uh, you know, a, a ripple effect or an independent review or an AM wake up can continue beyond this decade, that's mm -hmm. fine. I'm cool with that. I, with that you. actually makes me happy if that's the yeah. way things go. I'm with you. Yeah, if we can get those, these other shows to keep going when this just impendently gets worse and worse. Like you said, get those followings up the better. And people will be more aware and realize like, this is the same cucker that was on Fox news. Why the hell are we following this guy now that he's on Twitter or the Elon thing? How many people are Elon fanboys mm -hmm. after that buyout? And they just want to jump on that bandwagon and act like, 
ah, I'm a free speech absolutist. Well, no, you're not. <laughs> no, no, you're not. And we know about your WeChat. We know about your all and everything crap that you're pushing. And that's only going to get worse. Like you said, with Tucker going on that, they're only going to bring in more people in these. Uh, it, yeah, it's just, you can see the control coming from it. You don't have to be an expert to, to see the writing on the wall. If you're aware of any of this realm. Now, obviously if you're not, and you're just on Twitter checking funny tweets and sports scores and stuff like that, it's probably not uh, going to resonate yet until you sign up for that check mark or that dollar for this. And then you're in the system and then you're, and then it becomes your pay everything app. I saw, I think it was, was it Charlie who there was one I just saw today or something like, it might've been one of those crypto things like, hey, are you ex ready for the, you know, using WeChat as your X as your purchasing app and everything. They showed like a screenshot on a phone. <laughs> he's just like, he's like, no, <laughs> no, we're not ready for that. We're no, we don't want it. No one wants this. It's just another level of, you know, digital control. That's my, my thought of long-term. Um, I love your input on this is uh, cause I I'm just going off the little bit I'm seeing. And I don't think anyone knows anyone's long-term, you know, what their plans are behind the veils. But it, it seems like to me, a lot of these incremental steps that they learned from 2020 to get more control on things, right? Mm -hmm. Of Whether it's how are we going to get that digital ID in if they haven't already in lots of places, right? As trials. And how do we get the CBDC in? How do we get everything digitally hooked to where we can have that full control of like these little incremental We'll put this in writing here, this and that. We'll do these emergency acts here behind this and that. We'll get these things put in right now. It'll just be a little phase to get your digital ID. It's safer to have your driver's license on your phone. Um, you know, these little steps. I don't know when it finally comes into fruition of like now we're because I think once those are in, I'm sure we're already kind of, you know, screwed to a certain degree now. But hmm. once they get to that point, that's where I'm really like, man, like mass adoption. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what you're talking about is mass mm -hmm. adoption because um, they're about at the point where they're ready to roll out the consumer grade products. Right. Yeah, that mm -hmm. was that was one of the reasons why Elon bought Twitter uh, so that he could turn it into X and make it a payment mm -hmm. processor. Um, and that was also. If I remember correctly, that was also a part of the lockstep scenario in the mm. 2010 uh, Rockefeller document oh, okay. uh, was that there would, there would come about an, uh, an app or a program. I forget exactly how they referred to it, but it would be uh, termed the everything app, mm. right? Um, so they're already working. We got all but two countries in the world are trying to develop a CBDC, although they're not going to call it CBDC anymore. Yeah. Apparently that's got a bad name now, which is actually a victory <laughs> for us. It is. Uh, that we were able to ruin that for them in such a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. Like that was less than a decade, folks, that we were able to get movement yeah. on that one. Um, I think... You know, my gut feeling on it is because, again, I operate from the standpoint that they have knowledge we don't, right? Mm -hmm. There is knowledge that they have hidden from us that is being used against us right now that, like, we can't even guess at what it is. Yeah. Right? Um, so my intuition is that it is likely that they know that there are going to be massive geological events on our planet over mm. the course of the next eh, we'll just we'll stretch it all the way out to 2030 we'll say over the course of the next six years mm -hmm. and maybe even possibly beyond uh they know that these things are going to occur they may not ne necessarily know exactly when like they can't point to a calendar and say it's going to be this particular day in this particular year and they mm -hmm. may not know exactly you know, precise locations on the planet. They may have a good idea of regions and that sort of thing. But I think they know that these events are upcoming on the calendar. And that is what is going to allow mm -hmm. them to roll this stuff out and get mass adoption with the least amount of resistance possible because people are going to be 
at their most desperate. Hundred percent. That's the easiest way to do it. Get them fear, or yeah, at their worst, right? Or desperate. I mean, I think that's that's why they've been pushing the climate change narrative so hard, Mm -hmm. right? Because I think I think we are going to see geological events on this planet in the next few years that have only been mentioned in the history books, right? Mm -hmm. Or in the, the oral traditions that were passed down from generation to generation. I think we're going to see those types of events within the next decade. And that is what they're counting on. They're they're planting that seed now with the climate change narrative so that when these events happen and they have absolutely nothing to do with climate change, because they're actually cyclical events that happen on a repeating timeline, um, the the populace is going to believe exactly what they've been told. Yeah. So they're I not mean, even going to question the solution at all. And of course, by then, it's a done deal. I think you're spot on because... Oh, there, yeah, you see the writing on the wall with all the emergency stuff they're talking about. Was that they even mentioned on the union? And Steve mentioned it this morning that White House document. Yeah, where basically it's just essentially yeah, where Biden the same thing threatened as us with a national state of emergency over <laughs> yeah. the climate last week. Yeah, and even though we're already have at like sweeping powers to to basically become <laughs> yeah. a dictator. Yeah, and and you get enough fear, and if you already call like your shot, right? These things will happen because of we'll just call it. Now we're going to say climate change, right? First it was warming then it was ice age now it's back. well first warming, it was global it cooling to... that's right yeah we had the ice age right and then it was yeah. we had the acid rain issue and then we had back to warming now back to just it's easier to say change because it could be anything right an earthquake tornado hurricane do something um and then you see those maps you know in europe i've seen the weather maps even just a few years ago they're completely opposite and the degrees are even cooler but now they make it all red and fire and make people scared um uh, the, you know, even before I think people forget to, I mean, logical people understand, and there are a lot of good people and that have the history and the accuracy to show like, no, these things have happened. This is actually normal. This is actually where we're at. They're showing you a, you know, a sliver this big of a map this big and you're down here. But in, when you zoom in, it looks like we're at this really high point. Right. But you zoom out in the history of the world, we're like, you know, way down here. I'm backwards on my <laughs> camera. Um, but, uh, you know, and the more populated we are, the more things we're going to be exposed to, right? Where when you have a lesser population, we're not all over this country. Half these people wouldn't even know about certain events that would happen, right? It's not on the news. They didn't have news. You're not seeing it now. Everyone has a phone. You can see it. So it just seems like it's more relevant, right? Or like you said, these certain cyclical events. I noticed with, um, you know, over here in, in Oregon and in, in Washington, they've been really ramping up the last four years the cascadia quake that's supposed to happen here i don't know if you had heard too much about that but historically it's about every gosh i'm gonna i don't want to butcher it but let i know it's between five and seven hundred years and we're about 60 to 70 years past that and Mm -hmm. according to their records it's it's happened about every five to seven hundred years wherever that exact amount was and they could tell by the tides and and the, the soil samples from the tsunamis that it occurred from japan and it's usually about over nine it's huge. So it'd be the largest one we've ever had in the continental States. Wow. And the way Oregon's built and set up is as like the airport or their one oil reserve, it's on Sandy loom. And if anyone knows anything about sand and motion, it turns the liquid. Yeah. And so it just collapses on itself. And so the airport's gone, the, the oil reserves gone, the roads, the bridges aren't set up for this. They're gone. Half the buildings are brick. They're gone. Um, and that's from Northern California up to Vancouver, BC. And that's that whole plate, the Cascadia plate. And I remember I even asked my dad, I was like, do you ever, he's like, yeah, you know, it's funny. We had the FEMA plans for evacuation back in the early nineties. Cause obviously they've known about it. He's like, it's interesting. They're bringing it up a lot more now because I haven't heard anything since it. We had our backup plan and we, we were told these routes should hopefully work. You can never predict fully, but like they would have to move basically half of Oregon to central Oregon across the mountains. Wow. And they said you'd be minimum out of food, water, and power for at least six to eight months. Minimum was their FEMA's projection of how bad it would be. Um, and depending on the time of year, it could be worse, right? Winter with no power is worse than summer. And um, 
the last one that did happen, I think was in a January, but they've been really ramping up and saying the odds are now changing that it was probably not going to happen enough for a lifetime. And now they're like, I saw an article that said now it's about 35% chance to happen in the next 50 years. And there's another article that says like, well, now there's like a 40 to 50% chance it could happen in the next 50 years. And I'm not saying those couldn't be legit because maybe they are. Maybe it is an actual scientist who thinks like, hey, actually these calculations sucked and maybe this is right. Or is it more fear mongering for they know it will happen or, or they have a better idea of when and they can use exactly what you were saying as a way to kind of like in a Lahaina situation, it's it's gone. So now we can just reset build new cities, put you into this. Here's your new, this bada bing, bada boom. We're in a whole new, that's half the West coast gone. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I had, I had no idea that the area of effect would be that large. Yeah. I, I think most California is fine. It's more of the smaller towns, Northern and there, you know, most of Oregon is pretty rural, but I mean, Eugene up to Portland, Seattle, that's a huge area. Hmm. Um, and it's basically everything up until the Cascade mountain range. So the Western range, and then up to about Vancouver, BC, that's a, that's a big area. It's not East coast, obviously, but, um, that's a good amount. That would be a pretty big thing they could blame on. I'm sure they would <laughs> like, oh, yeah. why not? Well, I mean, Don't let it, a good crisis go to waste. Right. 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 And mm -hmm. it, as the more time goes by, the more that I do my own research. Right. And, and don't necessarily listen to uh, other people's opinions on things so much, but just look at the information, look at the facts and compile the facts. The more I've come to understand that the mainstream news media is there for the purpose of programming the general public to behave in a specific ways at specific times. Mm -hmm. that's what its role is. That's why you don't have actual journalists telling you the news. You have news models reading from, from a teleprompter, mm -hmm. right? That's all they're doing is they're just sitting there reading to you, whatever it is that somebody else wants you to know, or maybe more importantly, what they don't want you to know. They're not reading that to you. So, I mean, it seems like, the, the system is in place to set up for something, mm -hmm. something that has not yet occurred. That's where we've, the whole time we've been building toward this. You could say it started in 2020. Yeah, sure. That's fine. We can start our timeline there if you want. I don't have a problem with that, but it started a hell of a lot earlier than that. Mm -hmm. Like th this is a plan that was laid out hundreds of years ago. That, that multiple generations have been executing on over the course of time to get us to this specific period in time. There has to be a reason behind that. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we've been shown what that reason is yet, but I, I think it's coming. I think it's... Uh, most of us are probably going to live long enough to see it where... You know, if you'd asked me that 10 years ago, mm -hmm. I, I would have told you, I don't think we're ever going to see it in my lifetime. COVID completely changed my mind. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, you know, and, and that, in that sense, just cause I am fairly new to all this realm of, you know, independent media, I am, I feel forever kind of indebted and grateful to being exposed to that right before 2020. <laughs> cause I honestly, I don't know how I would have. I'd like to say I would have done all the right stuff, but I don't know, yeah. you know, when you're not aware of certain things, you know, if you don't know, you don't know, and you're just going about your way. Even if you're not watching mainstream, you know, you're just kind of, most people are trying to do the right thing and just kind of go about their way and do certain things you wouldn't know. So I am, I, I not to press back to it, but getting people into this realm and, and watching these shows to help, give people a real idea of what's going on and give them a real less, less fear in a way too. I feel like that's another good thing about a lot of these shows. They're not trying to fear porn anybody. They're being real about stuff. Um, but it's not this hundred percent black pill scare the crap out of you. It's like, well, here's what could happen. We should be aware and we should take action or do whatever you can and prepare yourself for things. But you don't have to be in this fear mindset. So you're panicking and making irrational decisions, which is what they want. 
um, or just use your emotions on your sleeve and jump one way or the other. Right. Yeah. I, I can see it with other um, older people. I know that are still, you know, kind of that boomer, not my, my parents, but I know some older individuals who watch still watch the mainstream, right? Like the MSNBCs, the Fox news is, and you can see their emotions switch with whatever they're pushing. And you can tell, and then we know when, when you're on the outside looking at what things are being pulled, you can almost see the puppet master moving them. Hmm. It's kind of wild to see when you can see both ends of it. It's uh but I mean, you can kind of see as a mass scale too, when you see stuff they put on the news too. Right. But oh, yeah. from a real local level, it's like, damn, that's, uh, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it really is. And especially once you're able to really get your head wrapped around the science of cybernetics, it becomes crystal clear what they have been doing with, with media in the past as well as what, what's being done with media today. Because again, it's not so much that they're relying on newspapers and radio and television for programming people anymore. Now the vector is social media because mm -hmm. it can be delivered literally right to your fingertips. You know, you don't even have to go and search it out anymore. It's, it, you carry it around with you yeah. all the time. Yeah. And it, we just shoot it right on in there. Just like Bill Gates putting those vaccines in kids' arms, you know? Right. Yeah. And that's that's a tough thing I, I struggle with. Um, I've talked to people about it too. With I don't think you, you don't necessarily have to have kids to, the, but just thinking about future generations will eventually dictate how you're run, right? When you're older, right? When right. We look at these old politicians now at one point. Well, well maybe. We'll see. Because well, apparently it's, yeah, right? it's the old people that end up running the show forever because they won't relinquish power. That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> good point um but you know i i struggle with things of like i'm about I, I little things encourage me and it could just be fake media on top of it but of seeing reports of like a lot of gen z switching to a lot of physical media cds vinyl brick phones flip phones getting away from smartphones and because it's been so in their face i was kind of in the mix of both so i I had a phone early, but it was the Nokia ones. And, and my social media at first was the base, the very first Facebook, the very first MySpace, AOL Instant Messenger, and then involved into this, you know, kind of high school going into college. So I wasn't born with it. I kind of got to, you know, be exposed. But I, I feel like any generation, you can see people addicted to their their stuff. Yeah. I was just at my kids' uh, swim lessons and I, I poked my wife because we try to do our best to like, I want to hide my phone, keep it away. I understand you need it sometimes for calls and gets me in trouble sometimes. Cause I don't, I try not to carry it with me. And then it's, that's when someone tries to call you. Right. Yeah. But I just don't want it as a pacifier or this backup. So that's why I'm thinking of maybe just getting to a flip. So then it is just there for calling and I can get back to the snake and the, the double texting, uh, with the, you know, the pushing, but, <laughs> but, uh, driving. yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but every single person there was just not watching their kids. They're glued to one slab, right? Every single one, not one wasn't, it was wild. And I've seen that even when I used to coach 10 years ago, these parents were just what's oh, okay. Yeah. And then they'd go back. It was, mm -hmm. they didn't want anything to do with, and it's only going to get worse. Like you said, then they know that and that's how they can put it right in front of you. So what I struggle with sometimes is, I don't want to go too crazy and be, I understand the use of technology. Right. But I think it's maybe if we can have, and which people do like yourself and Steve, and I mean, list could go on, right. Of like explaining the dangers of this stuff. Right. And what can actually happen and try not to get sucked into this stuff. Then maybe full blown, like no phone, no this, no that. I don't want to give them a phone for a very long time, but I, I hope I can keep them in that realm and make them aware that there's, like, even if you're not doing anything bad, I'm not saying most people aren't, but they don't realize how much of it's like just sucking the life out of you and taking you right. away from being present in life. Right. And enjoying things. I actually really like going, um, places, even I'm, even I'm not talking to people, even if I'm just sitting down with something to drink or somewhere and just being able to be present in the moment, even though no one's talking to me, it's just kind of nice. I don't need to have that instinct of just reaching down but they've done a good job of it i mean it makes oh, sense yeah. you get oh yeah 
And Dude, to jump I was, on that, I was yeah. incentivized to take the flip phone out of your hand and put a, a slave device, a fondle slab in it instead. Mm-hmm. I was paid extra money of by course. Verizon <laughs> for <laughs> that specific task. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't know if the vast majority of the listening audience is aware of that. The person at your local phone shop that you're so enamored with that you think is so charming and so funny and such a great person. I don't know if it's a dude or a girl or maybe a ZZM. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> They're being incentivized to act that way. Mm-hmm. Understand that. They are not your friend. Doesn't matter no. what they say. No. And I, I think regardless of what phone, I, I try to look at privacy ways and I was like, I think regardless of what I have, it's going to be tracked, right? So it doesn't, that part's probably a done deal. But at least if you don't have half the adware, that's less stuff they can yeah. pre programmingly know to send you notifications. Hey, you might want to buy this or that or that. That's and I right. get it. Like we do need technology. We're using it right now. And this is a good thing. Um, I, this is the one time I'm not just because of my kid's situation today. I just wanted yeah. my phone on me just in case. Usually, actually, I use this as my webcam. Um, oh, nice. Which is great because it's, I, I'll give it that. If I can have a, I'm already already had to pay for it, like a free 4K webcam, than paying for a really expensive one. I'll 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 use that. Yeah. Um. So I get the benefit of it, and it, it is nice. Sometimes you want to look something up, or it's nice to drive into work and watch AM Wake Up, <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, shows like that. But uh, no, I I'm probably beating it, you know, the drum too much. But I get what I was kind of getting at is when you get this addicted to stuff. Um, or maybe not addicted, but well, I mean, yes, but oh, it's an addiction accustomed to it. too. It is an addiction hundred yeah. percent, but where it's hard to now imagine yourself without one, right? Mm-hmm. Where it wasn't that long it ago, it becomes part we of didn't your identity. Exactly. And that's so then the, the whole next point. Step, exactly. So then when they go to now it's a wearable, right? And then it's an injectable and then it's, you will eventually get to a point where that you couldn't imagine living without. And the people who don't really understand the intent behind it aren't going to know. They're just kind of like how I got into this, right? I didn't, it was convenient. It's pretty cool. I mean, pretty mind blowing. You could have what you can on a phone compared to what, you know, they used to be. So I can only imagine when you get to the Apple glass and, um, um, you know, those aspects. And even before Apple glass, I remember when it was owned by Samsung, it was Oculus, the company. Yep. And they sold it to Apple. Apple took it used it in their own way, sold it again to meta and they've all used that technology to use it yeah. for their own. That's, that's stuff. how they spread it around. Yeah. Yeah. They make it and, look like uh, business deals and mergers and acquisitions mm-hmm. and all that sort of shit. And no, exactly. they're just proliferating the technology. That's mm-hmm. all they're doing. And you see, what's that one? I know they showed like the wearable thing where it projects weird shit and on your hand and oh, yeah, yeah. you get to the stuff. It's just only going to progress. I know Whitney's been preaching about it forever and you and every, I mean, so many people have, but you can see it in real time. It's, it, it's eventually going to get to that point. And people aren't going to realize it. it's, it's kind of like, you know, the frog in boiling water, right? Uh, you don't yeah. put them in it right away. You just, it's a slow boil. You don't realize it till it's like, Oh shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, two years ago, uh, people were saying that we were never going to have Neuralink. There's no way anybody's mm-hmm. ever going to let you cut a coin-shaped hole into somebody's head and a plant implant a, a microchip and and some mm-hmm. electrodes. Guess what, folks? It's already been done. Yeah, and it's this great story. Yay! Don't forget about the monkeys that all died. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's that's how quickly it. It happens, uh, ladies and gentlemen, which is why, uh, as our good buddy Ryan Christian uh, always says, you need to stay vigilant. Yes. Because otherwise they'll create some distraction where somebody paraglides into a rock concert uh, and, <laughs> and start shooting the place up or whatever. I don't even know what actually happened because <laughs> I was traveling back from Mexico that day. Oh, damn. Um, But the funny thing is that while this whole Israel Gaza distraction has been going on, Mm -hmm. the the digital gulag has been advancing in an unrelenting pace. 
Like mm-hmm. it has been so quick over the last six months, the advancements that they have been able to make. And most people aren't even aware of it because they're too busy arguing about bad Jews or bad mm-hmm. terrorists. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's how it works. That's how the game is always played. And my hat's off uh, to the overlords, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Cause nobody seems to, to want to stand up and, and point it out other than me. And you know, what's great is they just run the same playbook and it works over every and over time. again, man. every time man. over and over. It's, it's always that, that, uh, uh, sweep to tackle, right? They, mm-hmm. they just run that play over and over again. Nobody can stop it. So, yeah. The only thing that was different for me, I guess was the, you know, the COVID situation, but you, you take that away. It's almost all the same exact routine divisive stuff to get people distracted, sweep some stuff under past this, past that. Yep. I mean, they could do it in our face anyway, and they could probably announce it, but no one's going to do it. I think that's but... what's coming. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think after, after the selection, uh, it, it'll be uh, much more evident that yeah. the people don't really decide anything whatsoever. Yeah. Um, I think the mask yeah. is, is finally going to come fully off at that point. Uh, how do you Ryan, see this year going? I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't no. mean to cut you off there. That's okay. I was just curious how you see um, like, the end of this year going i don't know if i want to talk about it quite That's honestly right. <laughs> it's uh what i see coming mm-hmm. is really dark yeah. really really dark and mm-hmm. that's why i don't know if i want to talk about it because I, I get it i don't i don't want to give it the power that it needs to manifest I get it. Yep. You don't um, want to speak it into existence. Right. It, yeah. Cause just based on, you. yeah, just based on, cause we're now the final day of April. So mm-hmm. we're through the first third of the year. Uh, that's 33 to everybody out there uh, scoring mm-hmm. along at home. <laughs> um, if the trends continue all the way to November, we're going to be in a really dark place, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. So I would, I would rather not see that happen. I'm with you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Well, Ryan, um, believe it or not, we've already been going 90 minutes. Oh, damn. Yeah. It's, it's been a while. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not going to uh, hold you too much longer because again, you, you are a father and a husband. So I know you have other duties to attend to. So my final question for you Uh is this. If this uh, segment of the interview that is, that is about to be recorded right now, if this is the only piece of media that you make that survives into the future for your children to be able to consume at some point, oh, wow. what do you want to make sure that they know about this time in history? That's a great question. So this is the only thing that survives. I'm not going to remember a lot of verbatim from all the experts. So the best I could do, not being an expert myself, but just witnessing others, is not to repeat the question everything, but you do need to question everything. Stay vigilant, like you say. Um, Keep on your toes with as much as possible. Keep an open mind to things. Don't be one-minded into close situations and look to be more interpersonal with people. Um, Try to make those connections to people that I'm not saying it's a bad, you don't want too much group think, but have some like-minded people that, you know, you can relate with certain things. That's not a bad thing, you know, to find the right kind of communities to be a part of and use that as your stepping stone. If we don't have any other information to go by, to kind of move forward in a good way and do your best to be prepared for what lies ahead for things, not to be a total doom and gloom, but you should also be prepared um, and aware of what could happen and try not to trust so many things, question everything, even the people you think, you know, because sometimes even people get stuff wrong, even innocently, not intentionally and try to be a good judge of character. Hopefully I can help with that of, reading the people who probably don't have good intent and might be misleading you the wrong way is the best way you could try to move forward with trying to find information and stay off anything mainstream. (laughs) And yeah. Yeah. Find those independents the best you can and 
spread it to grow that community. Assuming you can find it, if that's the scenario. <laughs> yeah. That's solid advice, man. <laughs> it really is. And yeah, I mean, it sounds to- like it, how you have uh, have conducted your own journey to, to bring trying. you up to this very moment. I'm trying. Got a long way to go, but uh, people like yourself make it easier. And it's a very, like you said, welcoming. And I think the more we stick together, the better, in a sense. And bring more in the community. The comment sections are always awesome, regardless of what they say. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they're awesome. And uh, that's a whole kick-ass community itself, I think. And, you know, you see, like, you know, the new Prisoner Saturday Anarchy, those types of shows. Those are cool, man. Like, it's a, you can have fun with it too, right? You know, and we can only laugh so much. At least that's how I deal with stuff is sick humor, funny humor getting through it and then talking, talking about stuff, getting, getting through it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully my kids have the same, they're kind of there with the sixth sense. So hopefully they continue that. <laughs> well, if they have you as a father, then they already have a leg up on everybody else. Uh, well, that's, thank you, sir. that's what I will say because I have met many parents in my five decades, uh, wandering around this great land of ours. And uh, I have not met many uh, that have the, um, the capacity for understanding uh, mm. that, that you seem to ex- exhibit. Uh, you're, um, you're a very, um, you're a very patient listener uh, and, and you seem to um, be very quick to comprehend uh, whatever people are trying to get across w- without a whole lot of judgment, which is, is probably the, the rarest part of, uh, of all those qualities. No, oh, thanks. I, I try to take as much as I can. And I'm, I know I'm not a, like I said, I feel kind of dumb a lot of times, but I really want to try to listen and take those things in so I can absorb and relay those to the kids, whether they hopefully they accept it and listen as well, <laughs> you know, that way. Um, but people like yourself make it easier because that's where I'm getting my info from. And that's where I'm trying to make sure that gets out. And I am forever grateful for this kind of stuff, not to be this love fest, <laughs> you know what I mean? But for real, like it's, it is a huge deal because these are things we, we are going to have to deal with. And the more we can have these, these channels, to give that, I mean, man, it's, right. I, I think it's very undervalued. I'm not talking about my show. I mean, things like yourselves and others that are really putting that. I'm just trying to, you know, whatever, but you know what I mean? Well, yeah, but uh, every, yeah. every piece is, is as important as every other because yeah. they all go together in mm-hmm. order to support the whole. That's right? true. So it's not one is any greater than any other. They're all necessary and they all serve a purpose, you know? Yeah. And that's why I always try to, again, highlight the, the folks that are actually doing the real work in the media space. The ones who are putting out the good information, the ones who are trying to share that good information to a wider audience. These are the things that we need to be promoting in Mm -hmm. order to move this space forward. Because again, we only got so much time left before we're yeah. not going to have those options available to us anymore. So bigger footprint we can get now, the better we're going to be positioning ourselves for the future. And you are one of the integral uh, pieces that is helping us accomplish that goal. So thank you for that. Thank you for coming on and uh, being so generous with your uh, time with us this evening. I'll let you get the uh, the last word in. Uh, let no. people know, you know, where they can uh, connect with your work, and uh, I'll let you. Yeah, have it. yeah, yeah. No, thank you. I mean, I appreciate it, man. Any anyone that you know wants to take the time to listen, you have a busy schedule too, and like we all have stuff going on. So I appreciate it, man. Um, everything you've done from the beginning, reaching out to me, you know, doing some business, all the shows you do, you guys put a ton of work into this stuff, and that's half of my goal is to hopefully people can appreciate that, you know, the stuff you guys put together and, and put out there. It's not for the faint of heart for some, you know what I mean? And, uh, but yeah, um, 
basically uh my website I, I try to update as best i can i need to jump on that again sometimes i get a little behind it's really just a directory of each episode and then in each episode it'll have the link to those clips so if you just want to go straight there i need to set up an rss feed i feel i think that'll make it better to get directly to people like yourself that's kind of my goal and then i'll put some every now and then i do some funny parody clips you know like a Joe Biden one or something like that. I'll throw it on there for fun on a separate tab, but it's indreview.org because I was too cheap to get a dot com. <laughs> and uh, um, hey, yeah, dot org AM, is where it's at. Heck yeah. Uh, AM Wake Up Now on Fridays on Rumble and Rockfin. So that's awesome. Uh, shout out to that whole crew and Steve for putting me on there. I, I'm on YouTube when they allow it. Uh, Rock, not Rockfin, just on AM Wake Up, Rumble and odyssey or the other ones and twitter i believe it's ind review and it's really me just on there is just retweeting um people like yourself stuff just redoing that i'm not giving my take it's just kind of the same thing just repeating other uh, uh stuff so um if you want to use my site or links use that to share with others or even if you just found a show you like use that to jump on there and you don't even necessarily have to go to my site, but if you see something of a clip of a show or a journalist or a media member, that's awesome. That's the goal. Try to share that out, share, share, share with those people. That's the only way to get it out, to get around those algorithms as, as bad as it is out there. Um, that's what I would say. Yeah. And just appreciate everybody. Heck yeah. Awesome. Well, Ryan, thanks for stopping by Liberty radio. Appreciate it, buddy. 